we got wiring harness here. I should explain to you in your manual what each of these wires does. It's fairly simple. Just by looking at this, you can see one black wire. It's usually always ground. And this yellow wire is bigger than all the other wires. So that's your power input. And then if you look at these, these two are the same color. There's two purple ones, two green ones, two gray ones. And then there's just one red one. So your red one is going to be your switched power. So it's going to hook up to like my cigarette lighter. That's where mine's going to hook up to at least. And then this will just hook up to constant power. And then when you get it, there's, at least with mine, there's two blue wires here. And this one still has the thing on it. It says antenna remote max 0 .1, 0 0.1 amp. And the other one was for a remote amp. So all this does is when you turn on your radio, it puts out 12 volts. And this is what turns on your amplifier for your subs. And then, so I have all these wires. And then these wires here, if you notice your one wire, I'll take the purple ones because they're the longest. The one wire, maybe not because you can't see it. So this wire has a black stripe on it. This one does not. These are your speaker wires. So you're going to have... I don't remember what they are. I don't really care because I only have two speakers in this. So, I don't care. so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook the power wire up to this red wire, which is constant power from the battery to here. Then my red one's going to hook up to my cigarette lighter. My black one, I'm going to put a splice thing on the end of it and screw it into this piece of metal back in here, this frame support. There's already a spot where I had my old one. And then I'll attach a wire that goes from this blue one back to the remote turn on on my amplifier. Alright, got some wire strippers. The only thing is every time you cut these they get shorter and shorter. Just gonna strip both ends of this. One thing you want to be careful of is this is 12 volts straight from your battery. It is fused, so if you want to be safer, you can take out the fuse. It won't hurt anything. It fuses right here, so they usually always put a couple spares in there. But this wire here is 12 volts, so you touch it to something that's grounded and you'll get a nice little spark like that. And I just blew the fuse. Oh well, I'll find a new one. I'm over it, but I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back, I'll go grab another tool. I had to go get my stake on tool, and it's just for putting these splices on, works great, and won it, skills. Before I had that I used my, uh, just like wire strippers, see right here it's got thing for your splices, they just go in there, you follow the colors, and there's some on this nifty little pair of wire strippers, these are pretty cool, I got them for free too, I have about six pairs of wire strippers now, because I keep winning them through skills, and if you want to, you can run a separate power line from your battery to your radio hookup, just like get more power because if you notice this is like a 14 gauge stranded wire yeah, well actually it's like 16 stranded but so it's like 16 and then this is like 18 so there's not much of a difference if you want to do everything right you can go ahead and by all means run a new power line but I just don't feel like it. Plus I don't have the wire to do it with.
go ahead and get the wires pressed in there real nice. Make sure that they're in there all the way. And take your crimp on tool, stick the splice in there, you can push on it, and crimp it on to this end. Just give it a little tug, make sure it's good. And then you can take and hold it with your tool. That way you don't have to like grab your tool real quick and do it. Stick those in there nice. And crimp that in. So now, well, after I replace the fuse, we'll have power going to this harness. I think I'm going to have to get a little piece of wire to make it from, because that's kind of short. So I'll have to find a piece of wire for that. But I'm going to go ahead and Strip this one. And then find a spade head connector. Jabby here. One of these little dudes. sticks out there but I don't care even though I like to be precise so now we got this spade head connector on it I'm just gonna wrap that around there it gives it better connectivity and then take out that and these little zip screws that I used last time are exactly the right size and fit in to this end of the uh, tool so I'm just loosen that up and stick my connector on there and I can just tighten it down. Alright, it's nice and tight in there. Now I just need to go find a little piece of wire to go, just to make the switch wire longer. Alrighty, so I got this little extension wire spliced on there, and I'm going to take and cut off these little zip ties. wire here there's now a cat on my roof she's been messing around in here jumping all over the seats now she made it up onto the roof so just to make this a little easier I picked up some of these tap splices should have used that for the power wire too, it'll help keep these wires longer, they're easy to use. So the wire that ends, you're going to stick in to the back hole, so it won't go all the way through. And then I'm going to take my positive wire and just slip it inside of the tap splice. That's why it's called a tap splice, because you're just tapping into this wire without having to cut it or anything. And then, and then you just take and squeeze it, and it 
pushes that little metal piece down into your wire, completes the connection, then you take and close that cap off, and there you go. Got my tap splice all done. So now, if I take the radio and plug it in, Turn this up and change that fuse. 